guys again. Uh, my name is Aaron Edwards, field CTO here at CloudGenX. And so now we're going to take you guys into the next phase of networking, what we like to call network as code, which is taking a lot of the automation and DevOps principles that we use at CloudGenX and making them into a single solution that a lot of our customers use today to build their networks. So we believe kind of the ultimate goal of building a network and kind of going automation to the next level is getting to the point where you can deploy your network as code. You're not actually building a network of config files or I'm not configuring a controller. I'm writing code that defines what my network is and deploying that constantly as I make changes. And this gets you into a really neat set of features that you can get rapid templating. You, know, you can deploy thousands of sites in like a few minutes. You can do rapid deployment. Everything's auto-documented. So as I'm making changes at 3 a.m. in the morning as an overtaxed admin, people are approving these changes in real time or I'm getting exceptions where things are approved. Everything that happens is automatically documented in the system via audit logs and change controls. This is how we get to these deployments that are in days and not months. One of the things at CloudGenix when we were designing the product, one of the things we realized early on, if we have customers with 5,000, 6,000 sites, we can't be doing 10 sites a week. We can't deploy 10, 15 sites a week because if you have 5,000 sites, you're talking years of deployment to get to the point where everything's de deployed and replaced. So we wanted to build a system that was able to scale to hundreds if not thousands of sites per week. So what does this is our DevOps processes that we'll show and chat ops that we'll show a little bit later, which are both integral parts to the way that we build our systems. So what are the essential requirements that we believe to do network as code? Um, biggest one is 100% REST API based product. You can't be trying to do this with a CLI that you're trying to bolt a REST API onto. The system needs to understand REST API, need to have, has revisioning and understanding of when things make it, when they don't. Um, to be able to do network as code, where you're doing continuous integration and continuous deployment, one of the big things you do is you destroy everything and start from scratch. That's one of the important premises. If you want to actually destroy things and move things in the appropriate way, you have to be able to recover if you make a mistake. So having a really robust zero touch provisioning and cloud-based control is key to being able to make the system come back if you make the wrong choice. Uh, and then also having easy to use public SDKs and documentation that say how the system actually works from a programmable level. And finally, last but not least, is a tool that ties all this together with a, the ability to integrate in with continuous integration, continuous deployments. And one of the tools that we have that customers use heavily uh, is our CloudGenix config utility. So this utility is a Terraform style CI CD tool for exporting, importing, templating systems and controlling uh, CloudGenix via automation. Um, the reason we say it's Terraform-like is that we had tried a bunch of different automation frameworks to start with and none of them really met our needs, so we ended up creating our own automation framework. And when all was said and done, what we had deployed, later on we found out there's something called Terraform that was released after we started work on this that actually has the same premises and tenants. So if you're familiar with Terraform, this utility works almost exactly the same, just happened to be independently de developed the same way. Um, you can export site configurations, create a repository to store configurations, use continuous integration, and modify and check in configuration. So, we're actually going to demo this and show you guys what we've done. So, and you guys can actually participate if you want to. So what we've done, we've taken a lot of the stuff that customers use and we decided to post it publicly. So we actually have taken a GitHub account uh, and we, our GitHub account, we've made a repository called Network as Code. This code has a, a CloudGenix network set up and it has repo a YAML repository files that actually describe how these devices are set up. Um, and we have a Travis CI set up to automatically do continuous integration on these code based on changes. So what we can do, and what we'll show you in the demo here, is that you can come into our repository, fork our repository, make some changes to the configuration file, and then do a pull request back to us to actually take those changes. And we can sit down and use our approval process to say, yes, we're going to take it, no, we're not, and all this other stuff. So we'll go through that as part of the demo. All right. All right, so we can see, good, we're here. So I'm actually logged into GitHub here. And I'm looking at the CloudGenix network as code environment. So this has a lot of actually uh, telemetry in here that we do. So what happens from a workflow standpoint, as you make changes into the Travis CI and the GitHub repository, um, as people make pull requests, when this continuous integration goes, it automatically does the commit and changes in the CloudGenix network. 
And then the integration system actually checks back in telemetry into GitHub, so you can actually see the results of your changes. So what, one of the things you'll be able to see is you'll be able to see build logs which show any errors or anything that might happen. And number two, you will actually take screenshots of all the different UI pages, so you can actually take a look at your changes that have been gone through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to take a fork of this into my own personal account. Oh, I already got it. It's We're good. Okay, so now we're going to come back to So I'm going to fork it. I'm going to fork it to my personal account. And I'm going to go in and make a simple change. And I'm going to make a change so I don't even have to download the information. I'm just going to do an editor change to one of the files. Um, this is a YAML file representing the, so uh, going back to the question earlier of what, can you pull the information from the, the CloudGenix controller, this YAML file is a state of how things existed in the controller when this file was created. You can pull it down, uh, you can also push it back. So you can make changes and push it back, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change, uh, maybe I'll change my postcode just to be easy. So I'm going to edit the file directly. Uh, let's make the description number one. This is an easy change. So when I commit these changes, I've now got it committed into my repository. So now I'm going to come back and do a pull request to bring this into the production network. I'm going to say, my changes are great. I'm going to submit this into the CloudGenix master. And so these are what, we have a lot of customers that are actually using something exactly like this in production for their network to be able to handle change management and automate all of their systems automatically. Obviously, they're not using GitHub in public. They're not using Travis CI for the continuous integration. They're using other tools like Jenkins and on-premise Bitbucket and things like that. All right, so now I've, I've made the changes. and I've made a request that I'd like to merge these into production. Um, I unfortunately can't approve my changes. I could actually, but I'm going to have Mike, who's logging in right now, come in and approve my changes as part of the workflow. So he's going to take a look and review my changes and say, hey, is this something that we want to approve going into production? All right. Go ahead. And then it'll be merged into, and then it'll get merged automatically. Uh, once it's merged, it'll get deployed automatically into the network. All right. So he merged it. So now that automatically kicked off the integration process via continual deployment, that's going to go in and deploy it. And so we can see with Travis CI, we can actually see that it's actually in process of deploying. So I'll come down here to this nice little link of the build logs, and we should be able to watch it deploy in real time. So it actually already finished. So it already deployed it to sites. It's quick. Um, oh, actually, no, this is the old ver This probably hasn't deployed yet. Or was it that quick? That doesn't seem right. Nah, there we go. Now it's deploying. Yep, now it's deploying. I thought that was really quick. That was the last one. Yep, it's still booting up the system. Yep. So in the UI, what was that branch branch two that I modified? Branch two. So let's go into. It was element. Which element was it? It was. Okay. See if it's deployed it yet. Yeah, it already deployed the change. So the change is actually deploying right now. Yeah, so it's already got the pound sign in the description. So what's great now, now it's going to go through and take screenshots. And so what it does as it's taking these screenshots of the system, which normally you don't really need for a production network. You can have it. Some customers are doing different things for telemetry. We also check in what's called results. In this demo environment, we check in results into a different branch called results. So in this results branch, 
I can go in and I can see screenshots from the last commit. So I can see what did my network look like. I can hop into a branch and I can go into that element that we just saw. And in the previous commit, if I go into basic info, I can see that the description was element one. This is what it was seeing before. And now in live, I can see that it's updated my description to be pound one. Now what's neat is that as soon as this screenshot process takes up, now the screens will get updated with the new information. So in this results thing, I will have the new screenshot that has the, the correct value. But I can go back in time. Since this is a Git repository, I can say, what was it last time? If somebody makes a mistake and I take down a site, I can actually revert the configuration for that site. Or I can say, you know what, I'm going to make a new check-in that actually fixes that individual site versus reverting all of my changes. So as I'm going through making all of these changes in my network, I can, there's a huge amount of tools available. I mean, we're using GitHub's tools, we're using Travis CI in this demo environment. We have customers using Bitfuck, Bitbucket and Atlassian and like all those different tools that can be used to robustly monitor and manage and authorize these code because you've got customers deploying this type of stuff into cloud environments. And so all those tools can all be used out of the box with stuff that we've got here today. And so customers can deploy these things across huge amounts of sites. I mean, if I want to deploy a new branch, Literally with CloudGenix, I just take one of these config files that you guys see here. These representations of our API, I can take one of the files here, copy it, and replace things in a template. So I can basically make a template and say, this, is this site has a different serial number. If I want to replace a device at a site, let's say, heaven forbid, there's a CloudGenix device failure. You know, that never happens. Our devices are 100% bulletproof. Um, <laughs> but if there, is, if there was a device failure, I literally come in here and I change the serial number in this file and the new device is brought online automatically and the old device is taken out. It's slick, it's nice and it's neat to be able to do something like this, to be able to go from ground up to the fully configured and back again, just as part of natural course of everything. Yep. And then, like I said, this is a publicly open demo environment. If you guys wanna play with it, feel free to do a pull request, request some changes. Did you, it's up there. All right, let's try. Yeah, it's been going on. <laughs> let's do, there's a pull request. Pull request. Update my house. <laughs> nice. All right, let's review it. Nice. Okay, so you changed the address. All right, so I'm going to say, looks like a nice place. It's not. <laughs> now I'm going to merge it Accurate. in. Accurate. Oops, I got it. Hit twice. All right, so it's merged. So now we will go back here. We see it's the integration is going. Let's go look at the build logs again. Yep, it's in process. So you can see it's installing our CloudGenix config utility. And it's executing the configuration changes right now. And so in a second, it'll take, a, it'll take about five minutes for the screenshots to get done after it finishes it. Great, it didn't have a problem. So just to be quicker so we don't have to wait on the screenshot, I'm coming here to refresh. It's there. You have to go to the UI. Huh? You have to go to the map. You change the site. Oh, the site, thank you. you thank you, site, you're correct. Uh, just the city. Oh, yeah, I did. That's branch two. I forgot to update the state. Yeah, that's fine. It'll be, it'll be, <laughs> so if I come here and I look at the site information, right here. No, no, uh, the other branch. Branch two. Branch, was it branch two? Oh, branch. sorry. Branch two. It's still sitting in New York. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's in New York. I forgot to update the state. And it's all good. I actually have to update Lat Long. Yeah, you have to, uh, Lat Long okay. will pin it. Got Carl's it. house. Yep. But we got your, like, Carl's house and that's where we're going to go to Where it's at. Yep. So the, the, the actual site location is based on Lat Long. So congratulations, you're now a certified CloudGenix Network Admin.
<laughs> but that's how easy it is. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of effort to do this, and you can actually deploy this quite widely. This is one of the things that, you know, for understanding what my network is and for doing auditing, compliance, understanding how things are going, we have a huge amount of tools that you can use in the UI. I can come in here and I can view all these changes that are being done from the CloudGenix side. But we're going to be a part of a bigger ecosystem. You know, you want to network as code is really the way that people want to go going forward. And being able to have this thing work in this continuous integration, building up from ground up, is really the way th of the future of how things are, are built. And networks and enterprises are wanting to build networks.